Hi guys. Welcome to NGC online. Today we are going to discuss about the Victorian age and reform act in the module 1 chapter 1 of third semester history of english language and literature for BA english students. In this video we are discussing the introduction to the Victorian age, the socio-political changes in the Victorian era which includes the Reform Act and Chartism. Now, we are going to discuss the Victorian age. Queen Victoria came to throne in 1837 after the death of King William IV. She was an excellent ruler and her reign marked the beginning of an era of scientific, industrial, educational, economical, socio-political and cultural advancement in England. The Tories lost the governmental control and Whigs assumed power. As you all know, Whigs stoutly opposed monarchy and fight against the court's corruption and its foreign policy and the persecution of the Protestants, while the Tories were staunch supporters of monarchy and the church. The House of Commons initiated many beneficial acts such as the Reform Act, Factory Act, Poor Law Amendment Act and Municipal Corporation Act, etc. So, what is Reform Act? Since the Tudor period, each country and borough could send two representatives to the parliament. After the agrarian and industrial revolutions, most people who lived in the boroughs migrated to the cities in search of a better life. Some boroughs disappeared completely but enjoyed the benefit of sending two representatives while the newly formed by industrial towns got no representation. Also, according to the old custom, any freeholder with an income of 40 shillings could vote while wealthy tenants farmers could not. With thinkers like William Corbett and Jeremy Bentham, the Whigs were able to unite the dissatisfied people and called for a social reform. This Whigs government appointed a committee to study parliamentary reforms with Lord Durham as chairman. Earl Grey, the Prime Minister, accepted the changes recommended by the Durham Committee and introduced a reform bill to the Parliament in 1831. The House of Lords opposed the bill and as a result Grey requested King William IV to dissolve the Parliament. The Whigs were re-elected in the general election that followed. This clearly indicated that the people wanted reform so badly. But the bill was once again rejected by the House of Lords. Earl Grey resigned and Willington was asked to form the ministry but he could not and Grey was asked to return. This bill was proposed for the third time in 1832 and was finally passed. The total number of seats in the House of Commons remained the same, but 56 rotten boroughs were disenfranchised and 30 others could send only one member. As a result, 143 seats were released. Of these, 65 were given to large towns and cities that had no representation and 65 were given to newly created rural constituencies that were thickly populated. The remaining 13 were given to Ireland and Scotland. The 40 shilling freeholders retained their right to vote but the franchise was extended to copy holders and leaseholders whose lands were worth £10 a year and to short leaseholders and tenants whose lands were worth £50 a year. The changes might appear impressive but only benefited the middle class people. The working class who did not benefit the Reform Act led several agitations and movements like socialism, trade unionism and chartism. Now, what is chartism? In 1836, William Lovett started a movement that sought to establish parity of the working class with their masters in political matters through the rights to vote. With the help of Francis Place, they drew up a program of six points known as the 
people's charter so came the name chartism the people's charter was rejected by the parliament in 1839 and 1842 a general strike was declared and hundreds of chartists were imprisoned although the movement appeared a failure most of their demands were later considered